This was my first Revolutions Trains purchase and on first viewing it looked to be a high quality model. Things changed however when I got it out onto the track so it's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. So we're going to kick off with a short unboxing of the two car wagon set from Revolution Trains. Uh, we'll then get into a close up view of the model. Uh, we'll do a short running session and in that we will encounter an issue that I did identify. We'll talk about that and we'll talk about potential remediation to that issue. And then we'll get into the normal summary scoring and final recommendation. Okay, let's get underway. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. So today we're, I'm going to be reviewing uh, these cargo wagons uh, from Revolution Trains. It's the first model I've ever reviewed from Revolution Trains. It's the first model I've ever owned from Revolution Trains. So this is going to be an experience. So come with me on this little journey. And if you've never seen Revolution Trains products either, then this should be informative for you. So um, I do already have the Hellyan um, cargo wagons. Uh, I do have a full rake of those. And I do have some Rocco cargo wagons as well. Uh, and I was interested when I saw these um, to just compare them, I suppose, to the, the Rocco and the Hellion versions uh, to look at the quality, uh, look at, uh, at all asp running performance, all that kind of thing. So we're going to take a look at this two car pack. It comes in this very nice uh, packaging, large packaging, physically large packaging, which you kind of need for uh, uh, the cargo wagons are quite big. Uh, it's got a nice outer cover on it. So we'll take that guy off. Um, similar to the Acura scale models, I guess, um, which gives you a nice protection. Uh, and then you've got this, again, very sturdy, nice box. And, and again, very similar uh, packaging to the Acura scale models, the way this is done. If this, this had a, a Cure scale on the box, I'd actually wouldn't be surprised because this is ver nearly identical to the way they do their packaging. Um, so we're going to open this guy up now. And uh, we've got two car set, as I say, they're two, two of the same, same cars. And they come with a nice protective sleeve for the body. Uh, now these are in the pristine livery. They don't have any weathering on them. The versions I have at the moment have weathering. Um, I guess the first things comments I'll make is it's got a really quality feel to it and, and, it, and it actually looks really good. And uh, we've got a separately fitted rail there. Very nice registration. All the labeling is really crisp and clear. Um, nice level of detail overall. Uh, you've got sp spring return on the couplers there. This is uh, the bogey's free, um, and they probably. It, it, I, in my first impression, is this. It looks a step up from the um, the Hellion version. I think the, the Rocco versions were pretty good as well, but this this definitely looks like a step up in quality from the Hellion version of this particular wagon, and. Um, I think I can see, you know, there's lots of little extra bits of detail here uh, that we don't have on the Hellion and it's just the overall look and feel. Um, and I, I suspect the running would be better as well because the, the Hellion had a very funny bogey arrangement, which, which wasn't good and it was kind of catching. Um, this looks like it's going to be pretty good. So we'll do a close up on 360 of, of the two cars. Um, but my first impression out of the box and with the packaging as well, packaging looks, is excellent. Uh, the model looks really good. It looks to be a step up from the, the Hellion model. We'll run, them, we'll run them in a combined rake. So I'll do a running session with these two cars combined with the Hellion and the Rocco versions. And uh, we'll kind of get a look at them and see how they run. But first off, this looks, looks really good, feels really good and is packaged very well. So um, I'm really pleased if, if all of Revolution's trains offerings are to this level of quality, um, which is kind of a similar level of quality to what we're used to with a cure scale, for example, then I think um, they're they're going to be very good, uh, a very good uh, company to deal with uh, in terms of uh, freight models like this and other models that they do. So first impressions, really good. Let's do the close up and then we'll get into the rest of the review. But a, great, a good start. Uh, Revolution trains have made a good start. Okay. Okay, let's get into the close-up view. 
So we're going to take a side on view of one of these uh, cargo wagons. And I think the first thing uh, to say is they are very nice looking wagons, good high quality wagons. Uh, they're coming in a pristine livery, which I suppose is not that realistic. And if there's one comment I would make, uh, it would be nice if they had offered a weathered option at least for these wagons. Uh, I know we can always weather them ourselves, but it, I would tend to usually be happy enough with an off-the-shelf uh, weathered option such as Hellion or uh, EFE Rail also provide. So um, that's just something they didn't give. But it is a high quality, good level of detail, as you can see here. Nice registration of all the labeling, the lettering, uh, the logos, etc. Um, some nice separately fitted parts, some nice bogies there as well. The bogies actually seem to be better than the Hellion bogies. We'll find out that's not quite the case from a running perspective in a few minutes. Uh, but overall, very pleased with the appearance of these. They do look very good. And I suppose with a bit of weathering, they'd probably look even better. Uh, so here again, a 360 view of this. So a nice view around the, the wagon. It's a physically large wagon. So this is probably going to, going to be one of the largest wagons you have in your layout if you have one of these. I think it certainly is a nice looking wagon and uh, no no qualms. I think there's good level. It looks like a high quality offering. So from this perspective, I think from the appearance and visual perspective, my only comment would be it would be nice to have a weathered option. But apart from that, I, I think it has everything I would look for in one of these wagons. And it seems to be of good quality. Both wagons didn't have any issues. There's no parts falling off or anything like that. So good quality in these wagons and well well packed as well. So, so good from a visual perspective. And really the next thing is the performance on the track. Now we're going to get into the running session. So... I'm going to pick it up here. This is a running session I did, which also included the KFA wagon, which I used for my last review. We're going to focus on the uh, the cargo wagons here, and they're coming up towards the rear. And I think you can see already a bit of a wobble on that rear wagon. Now, I did originally have these at the front of the actual train configuration that I had, and I was getting this wobble effect. So I said, okay, maybe they might do a little bit better at the rear, but I think you're going to see through this through this running session that there is a wobble. It's to a lesser extent on the fr first of the two cars and it's more on the very rear car. And that's not the position of the cars in the train. That's actually a characteristic of those cars. So we're just coming off a radius two circuit now. We're going through an express point exchange onto the radius three, radius four circuit on, on my layout. There's no issues from a point work perspective or anything like that. I didn't have that problem. Uh, this issue occurs, it's not even linked to the curves, it occurs on the straight. You can even see a bit of a wobble there. It occurs really just anywhere. It can occur anywhere on the track, to be honest. And it was particularly bad with that last of the two wagons, you know, the one that's pulling up the rear. You can even see it, see it wobbling there quite disturbingly. And as you increase speed, obviously that level of wobble can increase. And I was getting actually quite concerned that I was going to have a very nasty derailment as we went through this. Now, once you get to the bottom of the issue, you can probably see that's less of a likely to be the case, but nevertheless, not good from a visual perspective. It just looks totally unrealistic. Whereas the Hellion wagons, you can see them sitting on the track really smoothly, no lateral movement at all. And you've got the bouncy castle, if I call it that, which is the term I use really for this at the rear there, did not look good throughout this running session. Now we're picking up the speed here to get to the kind of 65 mile an hour range. So as far as I went on the running session, I re until I explored this a bit more, I really wasn't content of going any faster because, as I said, I was concerned about derailment. You know, that wagon, you know, just starts to rotate quite violently. It's, it's rotating there. Uh, you'll see it here uh, moving around a bit as well. It occurred at all speeds. It's not even just at the larger speeds. It, it, it can be worse at the larger speeds because the level of, of movement can be bigger. But I just saw it on both wagons at all speeds on all radiuses, including straight track, nothing to do with, with the point work or anything like that. And just a built-in issue on these particular wagons. And really, the next section, I'm going to go through that and actually get to the root of the problem. Okay, so let's graphically look at what's going on here. Uh, now, this is not going to be to scale, but it's to give you an idea of what's actually happening. So we've got the metal chassis at the base of the wagon has this sort of metal formed area to carry the bogey uh, which has got a screw insert inside it so you can screw the bogey in, in place so the plastic bogey goes on top of that and then you've got a screw that you screw in on top of that to, to hold it in place and that gives uh, freedom for the bogey to obviously rotate etc 
Now, that just shows you the next picture there. So that's with the, with the screw actually fully in place. Now, one of the things you'll notice there is there is a gap. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap between the bottom of the screw and the top of the bogey. And the net result of that is over here, uh, where you've now got an ability to kind of rotate the top of the, the wagon on top of the bogey, and you get that side-to-side -side motion, uh, which we saw during the running session. And it's because you've got extra play here and that little gap, because the, the head of the screw is not flush with the top of the bogey. Uh, in which case yeah, you cannot basically prevent that from happening. Now you you can't fully tighten in, if, if it was flush you can't fully tighten it in because you do need enough play for the bogey to go around corners but there's too much of a gap there and it's causing this. So how do we resolve this? So we resolve it here by adding a washer basically and it needs to be something that would be suitable, something like a nylon washer is what I would recommend. Now I used a very a piece of um, see-through plastic which I literally just caught, uh, cut out of uh, some material, plastic material that I had. It's, it's pretty thin, so something less than one millimeter should, should suffice and give you enough clearance. Because it's plastic, it's going to give you a level of freedom of movement that you wouldn't have if it was, if it was a metal item, for example. You, it, was, it could actually start biting into the metal chassis, and you don't want that to happen. So an eyelid washer, if you have them, that would fit appropriately would probably be the idea. But I did my own, and it's sufficient to, to get the wagon into a running state, and I'll show that to you in a minute. So when you put the plastic bogey on top now, and then add the screw, uh, you've no gap and you've basically got no play there. Now, you've got to be careful not to tighten the screw too tight because you do need to have enough play so that you'll be able to go around corners. And I did find actually when I added these kind of makeshift washers, I did need to run them in. The first couple of times I ran them, I actually did get derailment. I had to loosen the screw a little bit and actually run them in with a gradual increase of speed. And then all that, any of the kind of derailment problems I was having went away. Uh, something to note so first off you might think oh i've got a problem you tighten up the screw really tight the bogey can't turn anymore and uh, and then you've got a derailment problem so that's the kind of a trade-off you need to make and i'll say i you just leave enough play in the sc in, in in the screw so that the bogey can na navigate your turns but it doesn't have that um, gap that allows it to actually wobble on top of the the track and you get the separation between the orientation of the the actual wagon itself and the underlying bogey and you get that wobble effect that we saw. I'll show it to you now in the next uh, pieces of footage. Um, we'll just look at look at what I actually did. And so we've got a picture here of the support for the screw. Uh, when you remove the bogey, you can see it there. I say that's sitting, uh, protruding from the base, the metal base, and it is metal. It's part of the underlying chassis. And what we're going to do is add in a little washer into that now. And we put one of these little makeshift washers that I've got, and you can just see it lying on there. Now, literally, to make the hole in the washer, I literally just use a paper punch. It makes the hole a little bit large. It, probably a smaller hole would be better, but this was for the purposes of getting done something done quickly and neatly. And it does make a clean hole, which is good. But you could get the drill out or whatever, or use some other implement to make a suitable hole and just make sure that it was a clean, a clean finish on it. That's it there. You add the bogey on top of that, and then you screw that in place. And when we restore this onto the track now, uh, you can now see that you've lost that kind of bending moment that you had. The wagon is now sitting firmly on the track and it's effectively the same as, as the Hellion wagons that we had there. You didn't see them actually moving around. And so this is what we have now. And so over the next little bit, we'll just, we'll just run this in a little bit and I'll show, I'll show you this running at different speeds. We're on radius three, but the problem as we've seen occurs on all radiuses, so it doesn't make any difference and it occurs on straights as well as curves. Just running it in here at pro typical speed, I'll run it all the way up to the 70 mile an hour mark, which I didn't actually go as far as that in the running session. And we can see that there's a good level of stability there. There's a tiny little hint of a wobble because there is a little bit of play. You do have to leave a little bit of play, but it's infinitely better than what we had originally. And I wouldn't be worried about actually cranking up the speed on this now to go to even uh, higher speeds. Whereas previously I, I was very averse to do that because it looked like the wagon was going to fall off the track. Literally, it was uh, it was wobbling so badly. So that's really the remediation. Uh, this is my quick fix depending on the wagons you get, depending on tolerances. You may not have this problem at all, perhaps. Maybe they may have addressed it on later revisions. And maybe it's down to some sort of manufacturing tolerances on the bogey, for example, because if the plastic was a bit thicker, you wouldn't have the problem. 
Uh, so not everyone may see this issue, but just be aware of it if you do see it. This is my quick fix for it, and it does improve the scoring if you factor this in. If I wasn't able to resolve this pretty quickly like this, I would be giving this quite a bad rating from a performance perspective. So quite important that I was able to actually find something a pretty quick fix that's very easy to do. It's literally two screws per wagon. If you, you may have suitable uh, nylon washers to hand, or if you don't, you can easily make, do a DIY job as I did. And it just gets the wagon into a state that you can now use it. And visually, it now looks like a, a proper wagon. Your realism is restored to your layout again. I know some people have other problems like derailment. And as I said, you have to be careful with the tightening of that screw. Once you apply these washers now, you do need enough play for the bogey to be able to rotate. And if you, if you do tighten the screw too much, that would be a problem for you as well. And once I made sure I didn't tighten that screw too much, once I did the remediation, then any sort of derailing wasn't happening either. And the wagons are running at a satisfactory level. I'll score them both with and without the remediation so you can see what that looks like. Really, these wagons would have been a non-runner. I wouldn't be recommending them unless you could resolve this pretty quickly. Okay, so let's get into the next part of the review. Okay, so let's get into the summary. We've been looking at the Revolution Trains IWA hold all van in the cargo wagon livery. And they come in two two car sets with different running numbers. There is a minimum radius two curves and we did our, our, some of our testing against that. Come with NEM standard copper pockets and with the narrow tension lock coppers provided. These come with a kinematic close coupling mechanism, which is pretty typical for this type of wagon. A lot of extra fine factory fitted detail, providing a very nice appearance. And they also have blackened uh, wheel sets. Unboxed weight is 159 grams, which I suppose for reference is similar to kind of a Mark II, Mark III coach. A relatively heavy wagon uh, from a freight wagon perspective. Top scale speed that we tested was 70 miles per hour. That was with the remediated bogies. However, I think there's potential to go to higher speeds once you've got that uh, remediation in place. And then the retail selling price is 95.99, and that's pretty typically what it sells for. Uh, I haven't seen it discounted at this point in time. So that's what we're going to score against. So get into the scoring. Uh, so as I mentioned, we'll have two scores for the running performance, 8.4 with the remediation in place. It's not absolutely perfect, but it does give like a very respectable score. 8.4 would be a, a, a very good score. On remediate, however, you do get a score of 6.0. And typically I wouldn't be recommending any wagon or any locomotive for that matter that had a score of that for running performance. Appearance and detail is 9 out of 10, and really the only gap here is if this was a weathered wagon and the weathering was good, I would be giving this a 10 out of 10. That's the gap. I think uh, you, there is no weathered option for this, and that is a gap. Extras and variants, you only do have the two wagon sets, so if you did want to have a rake of maybe 8 or 10 of these, you're going to have duplicate uh, numbers on those, unfortunately, and again, you're missing the option of uh, the weathered variant. The build quality and packaging is very good. In packaging, I'm giving 5 out of 5 uh, because I think it's it's excellent. It's in the kind of best-in-class type category. What I'm hitting them on the quality here is really the quality issue with regard, regarding the running performance, and that's the gap. So that's what the 1.5 is. Price value, I'm giving 5 out of 10, which isn't great. Uh, these are expensive wagons. It's £95 or £96 for two wagons, uh, for, so £48 each. You'll get a weathered Helian wagon, for example, uh, the, one of the IWP wagons, for just less than that as a typical price from a retailer. So normally your weathering would be a four or five pound premium. So you are getting better value off the Helian wagons than you are here. And even the Helian wagons have gone up in price quite a bit, actually, in the last 18 months as well. So price value is five. It's kind of on a borderline. If you're looking for this wagon, and you've been desperate to get them well then that's probably not going to be an issue for you but you know these aren't the cheapest wagons around and unfortunately they're at a price which is probably at a little bit of a premium to their competition so the overall score is a 7.8 out of 10 and for the uh, remediated performance and 7.2 for unremediated so what is my recommendation so i guess there's excellent detail build quality overall and packaging uh, with this particular model it is let down by that running performance that you get out of the box and which affects it all the way down at uh, low speeds. 
I think the good news is that have been able to re remediate this and get rid of that wobble effect and get the wagons back to a state where you would be happy to run them on your layout and uh, and without any added risk of derailment etc so I think that's a positive I think that the fact that there is that remediation there on that basis that is because it's pretty straightforward I am recommending these I think if you are interested in the IWA wagons then uh, you're not going to have too many options and you know these are very nice good quality wagons you know with the exception of that performance issue and at least you can address that to a very large degree i would like to have seen a weathered option as i say i think that would have been nice to have you do get weathered options for the iwb wagons from hellion and ify rail and i think it's nice to be able to get those out of the box so overall this is a recommended rating it's been a nice experience i suppose to look at these wagons They're the first wagons i've looked at from revolution trains I think overall they've got a good degree of quality here. I'm not quite sure what's happened there with that the, with the issue with the running performance issue, and uh, again maybe that may be batch related. Maybe it's related to a small number of wagons. I don't know. I can only measure what's in front of me. It was on the two wagons I had out of the set. I have to believe it occurs on other sets. So I would welcome feedback in the comments, please, if you've got these and if you've seen this same issue or if you've seen perhaps slightly different issues. And I have seen some different issues reported from a running performance perspective, then please uh, put those in the comments. It'd be very useful to share those with other people who are reading uh, this review. So thanks for joining this today. I do have another uh, wagon review coming up and then we'll probably get back into some of the locomotives I want to go through. I was hoping to review the first Great Western HST from Hornby. However, I have, I've had to send that back to Hornby. I've had issues with it and it has been returned. When it comes back to me, I will then give it a review of the returned version. I think my issues are, wouldn't be general issues. So I'm not going to base it off that. I'll base it off the, the model they sent back to me. So I hope to get to that. That was due to be reviewed in the next week or so, but that's going to be delayed by at least three or four weeks now while Hornby look at the issues I had. Okay, so thanks for joining today. Uh, hit a like if this uh, video was of use to you and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Okay, bye for now.